So, I just saw The Lighthouse, and honestly, I think it's probably my favorite movie of the year so far. This movie is pretty close to being perfect for me, and honestly, this review isn't going to be very long because I don't want to spoil any aspect of the movie for anybody who's interested in seeing it. Also, there's not a lot of footage I can use for this review, and honestly, I don't want to use a lot of footage because I want you guys to go in without knowing too much. So we're just going to be looking at the ocean for a while. So The Lighthouse is a psychological horror film about two characters in a lighthouse. And when I say psychological horror, I use that term pretty loosely. I honestly don't feel comfortable assigning a genre to this movie because there just isn't one genre on display here. There are a lot of comedic moments, but not enough to make it a comedy. There's drama, but not enough for it to be just a drama movie. And there's a lot of disturbing scenes, but not enough for it to be a scary movie. It's really a cerebral experience and it does its own thing. Right from the opening scene of the movie, you are completely immersed into the film. I'm not lying when I say that one of the first shots is like my favorite shot in the whole movie because it's just so damn immersive. And in this movie, you're never really sure what's real and what isn't. Usually I get kind of annoyed with psychological horror movies about somebody going crazy because a lot of people use this genre as an excuse to just show weird shit without having to worry about making a good story. A recent example of this type of movie done badly is that new Netflix Netflix movie in the tall grass or whatever the fuck it's called. I don't remember. Don't watch it. It's not very good. There are psychological sequences in this movie that are so gripping and powerful in their execution, and I could say that for multiple scenes. These surreal, nightmarish scenes were some of my favorite that I've seen in a movie of this type, and if this movie only had one of those scenes, I would still probably give it a pretty good score. But the fact that this movie is full of them just feels like it's too good to be true. There are also some very interesting filming techniques on display here that I really appreciated. You've probably heard already, but this movie is shot in black and white, and it has a smaller aspect ratio than you'd probably expect. But this never becomes distracting, and there are some really cool moments in this movie where the lighting is so low that the edges of the screen are obscured in shadow, leaving just the very middle of the screen as our focal point. And it's moments like this where the aspect ratio kind of just bleeds into the background, and I really like that. If you're going to shoot in a non-traditional way, you got to make it worth it, and this movie does 100%. And not only is Robert Eggers' directing perfect, but the performances from Pattinson and Defoe are just insane. This really is an astounding movie for what little it has to work with. It's just a movie in one location with two characters. Most of the movie is these two characters talking or passing the time, and it is perfect. The conversations are all interesting enough that you'll stay invested through the whole movie. Plus, there are multiple long, one-take monologues that show you just how good Willem Dafoe and Robert Pattinson are at acting. Again, if this movie just had one long-ass monologue, I'd be like, cool, I really like that. But it has multiple, and they are all powerful. And it's hard to say one of the two actors is better than the other because they both make the movie work as well as it does. Pattinson's character has a lot of depth, and it's interesting to learn more about him as the movie goes on. Alternatively, Willem Dafoe's character is way different, and he doesn't really change over the course of the movie. But he's such a solid and fun character to watch that you're actually glad he kind of stays the same. Not only do these actors work well off of each other, the two characters are also foils to each other in ways that I don't really want to explain without risk of spoiling things. However, I do have one complaint in this movie, and it's a little spoilery, so if you don't want to hear it, skip to this time code. I'm gonna go ahead and talk about it now, so that's your warning. The only thing in this movie that even bugged me a little bit is very much a nitpick, which is why it's not taking away from my overall score. But about halfway through the movie, there's a scene where a character sees a tentacle, and this tentacle was very obviously CGI. This is a movie that is filmed in such a traditional manner that a CGI tentacle really pulled me out for half a second. I can't stop thinking about that damn CGI tentacle, and if it was a practical effect, I wouldn't even mind. There's another scene with tentacles in the movie, but it wasn't really the only thing on the screen, so it wasn't as noticeable. Anyway, it really wasn't a big deal, it's just that my dumb brain cannot stop thinking about it. Anyway, I feel pretty good recommending this movie, and I'll definitely be watching it again before I inevitably buy it and watch it even more times after that. There are lots of reasons to rewatch this movie, and you can really take a lot of different interpretations away from it. I saw it with two other people, and there are multiple scenes that we all saw a different meaning for. This movie really is an instant classic, and I think anybody who likes film would really enjoy it. So I'm going to do a first for this channel and give The Lighthouse a 10 out of 10. It's of a merchant's daughter, they're brought up in Calio. Hurrah, me other girls, who let me go? She took me in the parlor and said, won't you be 